Every single day you are consumed with information. With the 24-7 negative news cycle and a pop culture that's polluting the airways, all selling out for the ratings game. Well, guess what? There's a more positive way to look at life. You live in the greatest city in the greatest country on the planet. Every day with our elite network of professionals, our goal is to educate, empower, and engage. And now it's time to fight for your American dream. Hey, good morning, San Diego. Good to have you on another episode of The American Dream. Thank you for joining me here. Got a lot of amazing stuff to get into here with you today. We've got Rafael Castellanos, who is the port commissioner, talking about the cool things happening in Seaport Village, the Coronado Bridge. We have a design, artistic design, to light that whole thing up. Some really cool things happening in that area of San Diego. We're going to hear it straight from the horse's mouth with Rafael. Also, we have Michael Gaddis, who is a reverse mortgage specialist, going to talk a little bit about the market. And then Jason Hall, who is a mortgage expert, brings in a charger player to promote a charity. It's going to be a great show, and I hope you can engage with us at craigsewing.com. That being said, the word on the American dream. Hey, look, the American dream, one of the many things that our country offers you is the opportunity to be an entrepreneur. And I want to uh, congratulate a recent sale of Pacific Magazine to the Union Tribune. Pacific Magazine, I've written a piece in for years. What you might not know is the owner, David Perloff, is one of the great leading success stories and entrepreneurs in San Diego. He built this magazine from the ground up, a guy that just had a passion around bringing fun, edgy content to the city of San Diego. Millions of people have seen this magazine, read it uh, by holding it, flipping through, or digitally now as it's online as well. The Union Tribune picked up on it. After 11 years of hard work, they bought this magazine. So. We are excited to continue to write our piece here in Pacific, and we're excited for David Perloff and the Union Tribune, a San Diego success story. We wanted to share it here for the first time on The American Dream. That being said, let's dive into our first guest today and learn a little bit about what's happening in America's finest city. Here we go. And now joining us in studio, you've seen him on the show plenty of times now and heard him on our radio show, Rafael Castellanos, the Port Commissioner. Good to have you in here, man. Hey, Craig. How are you? Nice to have uh, be on. Yeah, so nice to have me. It's nice to have you. <laughs> nice to be on. Whatever. No one cares around here. But no, it's good to have you on. Um, you're so active in the community, uh, legal background, ran for uh, the city attorney. I know you fell a little short there. Mm -hmm. It's a great run. I know it's very close. But you still got your best days ahead of you, right? So what, what's on the horizon for you? Sure. Well, we have a lot of work at the Port Commission that we're doing right now. Uh, we're engaged in uh, redeveloping the central Embarcadero, which many people uh, are familiar with as the location where Seaport Village is. Uh, Seaport Village is actually just a small part of that overall area. We have about 70 acres uh, that we have solicited proposals for. A redevelopment. It was a an international solicitation. We hmm. uh, advertised a multimedia campaign in over 90 countries, and we have six uh, proposals that That's we. That's fascinating. We, yeah. So let's go a little bit deeper on that. So mm -hmm. you have Seaport Village in, mm -hmm. in the Central Embarcadero, right? Mm -hmm. And when you say that you had, I mean. I'm interpreting that as like feelers out there for what, for what, like investors or? For uh, developers, okay. basically. People who are in the business of developing this type of project. It's a signature project. It's, uh, you know, world class. So world class real estate. World class I mean, real estate. That. Uh, the area between downtown San Diego and the Bay, yep. where the old police headquarters are, uh, Seaport Village, the area just south of the Midway Museum and the Hyatt Hotel. So it's an amazing area, 40 acres of land, 30 acres of water. Uh, we have six uh, proposals that we will be considering. We've got some public uh, open houses, so we're soliciting input from the public right now. What do you and, like? Well, I like the fact that I haven't seen any of the proposals yet. Okay. I'll be seeing them at the same time that the public sees them. Okay. But we have certain principles that we are going to uh, guide, let guide the process. We want as much access to the water as possible. Uh, we want to activate the waterfront. We would like extensions of the streets to go all the way to the water. These are things that we Not really value. Not too many do. I mean, there's Broadway gets you down very, there. Very right? few. Okay. Very few Is that do. what you mean? Ex ex exactly. Okay. Exactly. You know, a great uh, plan would include opening up uh, view corridors to the water. So that's what we're going to be looking for. Those are things mm. that we value, principles that we're adhering to. And so I'm very excited. I know the commission is excited. We have a tremendous amount of interest in what these projects are going to be, uh, you know, proposed. And, you know, we're also starting to do a feasibility study on lighting the Coronado Bridge. So that's also potentially a signature uh, art project, if you will, and that's also wow. coming down the pike. So talk more about that. 
So we're going to actually light up the Coronado Bridge? Well, we're going to do a feasibility study. It's going to take some time. It's expensive. Uh, it's about a million dollar feasibility uh, uh, project. So wow. we're going to have an artist. Uh, Just for the feasibility? Just for the feasibility, hmm. yeah. So Caltrans, the California Department of Transportation, actually owns the bridge. We'll be working in partnership with them, as well as our public art committee and stakeholders. We're doing a, a fundraising campaign. We're not going to use any public money uh, for the feasibility or for the actual project itself. So it's a large fundraising campaign. The San Diego hmm. Foundation is actually uh, organizing the fundraising. That's and pretty cool. it, it will take some time, but our goal at the port is to light the bridge by 2019. So that's what we're shooting for, and if we get it done, it's going to really be spectacular for the city. It's already a beautiful bridge. It is indeed. Yeah, I was just over there last week, uh, Coronado's. It's, it's amazing that a city is, is amazing as San Diego, which you already feel like you're on vacation, and just that little trip over the bridge. That's and right. It's a, escape from America's finest city. Could be, could be a lot worse. What does that mean for... People that live here. What, I mean, what is it? Uh, we're talking about things like art when you're talking about lighting up the bridge. Does that does that do anything for any, the real estate down there? Does it do anything for besides just you know making it more attractive? What, what sure. does this mean to us? Well, there certainly is the intangible value of great public art, and yeah. this certainly would be a world class art project. Great cities, world class cities have world class art. Uh, the bridge itself is a spectacular. Uh, piece of architecture and design and engineering. So being able to light it up and use that as a way to also heighten uh, other parts of the bay, uh, that is something that really we should strive for. And Anytime makes city you can great. make your city look more attractive, it's certainly a good thing. But when you're talking about things like the Central Embarcadero, I mean, these, these are real estate developments as well. Right? Absolutely. So not, Absolutely. it's not just a, an artistic thing. It's actually you're going to have functionality, I'm sure, commercial, some residential in there. We can't have residential on the Tidelands okay. under the public trust. Uh, but certainly retail, uh, hotel is permitted, obviously, uh, restaurants, uh, that sort of thing, maritime related. We have a commercial fishing industry there, Tuna Harbor. We want to promote that as a preferred use of the port. So those are the things that we'll be looking at as well as making sure that we're promoting the commercial fishing industry here in San Diego. We have a long tradition and history of it. So you got your hands full. I do indeed. Port Commissioner. I do. Is there anything we can do to get involved? If people want to learn more, what's the best sure. advice you give? You can go to the port website, portofsandiego.org. Okay. You can learn about all of our projects, not just this project. And uh, you can give your input as far as what you would like to see on the waterfront. So and in this area in particular. We're looking for feedback, absolutely. Interesting. All right, Raphael, good to have you on the show as always, letting us know what's happening in our city here. Thanks for having me, Craig. All right, coming up next, I would say that this guy is the number one Charger fan. I genuinely mean that. This guy is, is nuts when it comes to San Diego, our team. He hosts a radio show on KCBQ, and he's bringing in Darren Carrington, who is running a charity, a former Charger player, coming up on the American Dream here in just a moment. All right, and now joining us in studio, I genuinely believe this guy is the number one Charger fan. He's also a radio show host and with Team Home Loans, Jason Hall. And we got a special guest, a couple special guests. We got Darren Carrington, who is the founder of A Way Out, former Charger player, played in a couple of Super Bowls. Mm -hmm. And your wife, Vicki, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you. All right, so you're friends with this guy. Let's start with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They've known me a while. We've, we, our we our boys back. are about a year and a half, two years apart. Uh -huh. Darren Jr. is, what, 2021 20, now? 21. 21. So he's 21. JJ's wow. 23. Yeah. And they started playing football about 10 years ago together, where Darren, Vicki, and I got a chance to meet. Mm -hmm. And we've seen the kids grow up and do stuff. But more amazingly, I've seen what great people they both are. You guys are some of the two busiest people I know. You're still people of faith. You make sure... God's first family, and then you also run businesses and handle stuff. So yeah, I really pastor respect at that. Uh, the Rock as well. Yeah, yeah, marriage pastor, marriage right? Pastor. There. Yeah. So, yeah. is what don't you do? We should ask. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> what don't I do? Uh, I, it seems like I'm I'm really really busy, but the few things that I do, those things take up a lot of time. So, so you're 100 percent in. When you get yeah. in something, you're all in. Yeah. Well, as an athlete, I mean, is it, there's that competitive spirit? You don't get to the top of the game playing a Super Bowl and then uh, retire and then. Now what? Uh, was, it, was there a tough transition there for you? Or should I be asking Vicky here? You had to deal with him more, right? It was actually great. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a few years. I mean, it was a year or so of that transition because, you know, typically you don't have a guy, you know, people, you don't have this childhood dream, then you achieve this childhood dream, and then one day somebody tells you you can't do that dream anymore. You know, so that you At a young age as well. Exactly. You still got your whole life in right. it. So how old were you retired? 
30. So you were 30. Mm -hmm. So if I remember correctly, you got drafted by the Broncos in 89. Yep. You played in the Super Bowl January 1990. Mm -hmm. Lost to the Niners. Yep. Came to the Chargers. Took us Lions. to the Super Bowl. Went to the Lions, Lions first. And then Chargers. Yeah, Lions, we, we then don't Chargers. Have to, you don't have to talk about the Lions. The Lions, <laughs> do, is the Lions still an NFL franchise? Yeah, you don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but you came to the Chargers. Yeah. You took us to the Super Bowl. One of the guys that helped us get Super Bowl in 1995. Mm -hmm. And then we lost the Niners again. So you're 0-2 mm -hmm. in Super Bowls against the Niners. Hate the Niners. <laughs> Can you say hate? I and, said it. it, it yeah, know. is it fair to say he's a number one fan? Is he the guy who chases the team bus and well, beats on it? I mean, this guy, every time he comes on our TV shows, our radio shows, all he talks about is charge. You know he's like the number one mortgage guy in San Diego, and he only talks Chargers. Yeah. <laughs> you know when I come see the girls play basketball, have you ever seen me without a Charger? That's right great. I, I mean, no matter what the time of the year is, I love the Chargers, but I also love you guys. I love so, the Chargers too. Um, so let's talk about your family. So you guys have three stud athletes, you know, De'Ara, Darren, and Dijanae, mm -hmm. all three Division One players. There's been all lots of articles. Players? They all played Division One. They all grew up here in San Diego. They all went to Horizon Christian School. It's a private school that our kids went to uh, together in. Mm -hmm. But uh, talk about that. How was it raising those kids? I know you have still two in college that are super competitive. And I know I saw on Facebook that uh, Dijanae said she just started Stanford. So this is like her. Well, she will be starting Stanford wow. um, Monday. On Monday. She graduates yeah. on Thursday and has to report to Stanford on Saturday. So in her mind, she's already put it on Facebook. She's in Stanford. Yeah. She's there. <laughs> she's ready. So I got a question for you. Yeah. Obviously, highest level of football playing in the NFL. But you know the type of hits you took and how rough a sport it is. And now with everything that's coming out and all the studies. What's it like to be a parent of a kid who's now getting up to that higher level of competition? Does it make you nervous? What do you guys think? Um, on one end it does, but uh, I, think, I think what gives me peace is that they, they're a lot more aware of what's going on right now. So those yeah. guys, I mean, if, you, if you've been to an NFL camp recently, they are they're like prima donnas now. <laughs> and they have I don't, a lot of rules I mean, now, like, they... They have a certain amount of time that they can hit. They have a certain amount of time that they can practice, and they can't practice, you know, no more practice. So it, it is really, it's completely different. So, like I said, that gives me peace of mind. I do wish that he would have, uh, he would have played golf, but. <laughs> Maybe Phil Mickelson or Tiger Woods or. Yeah, right, you but, know. you know, what can you say? But he's pretty incredible. So he plays wide receiver. Yeah. I know he's all over Mel Kuyper's draft board. He's been talking about him since his freshman year. Mm -hmm. You guys, are you guys worried about him playing NFL mom? I mean, you know he's going to get drafted, right? As long as he stays healthy, he keeps his head on, he's got the talent, mm -hmm. he's going to play. Mm -hmm. Whether he exceeds, it's up to him when, right. once he gets that opportunity. Right. But uh, what do you think about your son playing possibly in the NFL? <laughs> well, it's exciting. It's yeah. definitely exciting. I mean, he's his dad's little mini-me, so just seeing him and the aspirations that he's had since he was a little kid, just seeing things kind of line up and those goals starting to come to fruition is pretty sweet. Yeah, that's kind of um, fun to watch. It is, and, and, and one of the things that I love about Darren as well as our other two uh, kids is their hum humility, and I never hear him brag. I know he's very confident, so he doesn't lack confidence, <laughs> but I never hear him brag and boast, you know, and... You know, they, they don't like to have a lot of attention drawn to them, and I can appreciate that a lot, especially with him having the ability to go and play in the NFL when a lot of people look at you and you're up here on a pedestal. The fact is that that means really nothing to him. He loves the opportunities that are before him, and not so much the status that comes with it, but just the ability to be able to play the sport that he loves on the highest level is, is pretty sweet. I think a big part of that is parenting. Yeah. Pro probably a bit. So tell us about your guys' charity. Uh, it, uh, a way out. We started in what year did we start? Uh, mm. Ten, ten years ago, maybe probably about right, ten. Right, probably right around there. Yeah, about ten years ago, and um, yeah, I, I got I got connected with the with the group, and really what it was is is, is uh, I wanted to give people hope, and the people needed hope, and it it started in the in the area of education where people they needed help. In school, so we helped people go to college, and then it became to where people wanted a, a better and healthier um, education. So it happened to be in Christian education. So we've helped a number of students, you know, go through, um, and it just happened to be Horizon. So that's where a lot of students have gone through. That's not the only place, but a lot of them have gone through there. And I, again, it's you know, you give people that hope of you know what. I know I have these issues, I know I have these setbacks, but I'm not gonna allow anything to hold me back. And it gives them an opportunity, right? It gives mm -hmm. kids that financially don't have an opportunity, you've given them an opportunity to go there. And I know in talking with Vicki in the past, 
you've had many of these kids going to four-year year, year yep. universities with scholarships wow. that maybe never would have had the opportunity had they not been seen in kind right. of a in that atmosphere. Right. Well, one of the things that's really cool is that what I saw was just the basic need more so than anything is that there were kids who were in the environment that wanted to stay. And there have been like travesties that have happened. We had one young lady whose mom um, had breast cancer and um, they were faced with, you know, what decision do we make? And this was a young lady who had been there um, and wanted to finish years, there and ago. she wanted to finish there. So we figured out a way to help her stay there. So that's kind of what we've done and it's not been, um, anything where you know we're just like oh we got to find these great kids you know we want to help kids stay where they're at and that's been the so, benefit for us so i know we've helped you in, in raising funds and doing stuff but for people that are watching um things you can definitely do is reach out to us at a way out uh, that's darren carrington's foundation you can reach me jason hall with team home loans and you can definitely let us know at craysewing.com and we can uh, get get some more information on the way so out. So if anyone wants to participate, donate anything like that, visit your website, yep. get some there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And 100% one, and of what comes in goes out. There's Love no it. salaries, there's no overhead. Everything that comes in goes out. Wow, that's yep. a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Darren and Vicki, thank you so much for coming on The American Thanks Dream. For us. Jason thank you. Hall, thank Appreciate you for coming on the show. Number one fan, like the number one fan right? Yeah, number one, one, here, right? Uh, the day he has a former yeah, charger right. on, he doesn't. Oh, okay, we got a little got emblem it. there. Usually yeah. I usually wear the shirt, but he's got it. Yeah. He's yeah. not wearing any pants today, though. Blue, though. <laughs> I do have a powerful shirt. You're in it. All right, more of The American Dream coming up next. Stick around. Today we're coming to you from La Jolla. We're gonna be speaking with the fabulous Melissa Tucci. She is in the top 1% in San Diego and nationwide for Century 21 and in the top 5% in the world. We're gonna hear from her about the marketplace in La Jolla, San Diego in general, and about how she balances it all because she's also the mom of three. So let's not wait any longer. Let's go hear what she has to say. It's so nice to be here with you. The fabulous Melissa Tucci. I've heard so much about you from Craig, I have to say. So it's such an honor. Oh, well, thank you. It's nice to meet you. We're standing here in front of one of your listings in La Jolla, which we will get to in a second. But I have to pick your brain first about the San Diego marketplace. Tell me what's going on. We're almost halfway through the year now. Well, it's really, from the even the last couple of months, I've seen just the inventory levels are still very low. I feel like they're still around the 30% mark under what they were last year. There's multiple offer situations, you know, on listings. It's amazing how things quickly go into escrow. The timelines, the days on the market are a lot shorter. And then on the buying side, you know, for a first time buyer, even a move up buyer, things are, you know, there's some homes, even 14 offers on one property in the first week. So it's, it's really interesting. We're getting into the summer months, um, you know, real estate in general always picks up, especially in San Diego. So I really think that we're going to continue to go strong. Is this reminiscent of 2005? You know what, a lot of people always ask me that, and I, I do see a lot of similarity, but the difference I do see is the stabilization of the financial aspect. Everyone that's qualifying, it's very difficult now to get a loan, you have to really qualify for it. So I feel that people are getting into a property that they could actually afford, and regardless of whatever happens in the future with the market, you know, you still need a place to stay, rents always go up, and I feel that people will be comfortable with their mortgage too. So I think that's a right. positive. It's not just this interest only, and then right. in a few years, right. everyone's in trouble. Exactly. So what about La Jolla? Does that apply to La Jolla, or is La Jolla a little exempt because it's such a desirable community? La Jolla is one of the most desirable communities in the world, I mean, honestly. So even if the market changes, La Jolla is really not affected at all, which is another wonderful thing about owning in La Jolla, just because you'll, you can't go wrong. So what are some of the things that you love about La Jolla? What's going on in the town? There's just so much diversity and authenticity, and you're so close to the beach, you're so close to different, you know, uh, restaurants, coffee shops, activities, outdoors. Um, there's parks nearby. There's just, you really have that full California dream. So it's just an overall great package to live in. Well, I wanna switch gears on you a little bit because in the open, I introduced you as the exclusive real estate agent for the San Diego Padres. What does that mean? Well, what that means is that I'm the only agent in San Diego that the Padres um, endorse. So they have never at, uh, represented another agent ever in their history with Major League Baseball. So it's a really big honor. So any players, any staff is given my information um, as far as helping them buy or sell in, in San Diego. And I also have, you know, affiliations in the ballpark. Um, I have signage. You can see MelissaTucci.com on the sign when you go to a game. So it's really a nice. neat, really neat 
neat affiliation I have with them. I know that you have kids. Do you guys get any perks from this affiliation? Of course. <laughs> we get to go to some suites where, you know, it's all inclusive and food and drinks and, you know, bathroom in there. It's just, you know, it makes it hard to sit in a regular seat at a ballpark. Now you get spoiled. Um, you know, I've been able to go to batting practice, go on the field, go on the dugout, go in the clubhouse. Um, I've gotten to go to spring training, meet the players. So there, I mean, there's so many benefits. It's really a great honor to be a, a part of that. Amazing. So, you know, I know that you have kids, you have three kids. Mm -hmm. How do you balance it all? You are the top 1% in the nation. How do you do it all? A lot of hard work. Um, I'm really driven. I have a very strong work ethic. Um, you know, I have a wonderful husband that helps me as well. Um, I have great kids. I love what I do. I'm passionate about real estate. So it's just, you know, you try to find a balance and, you know, hopefully I've, I've done that in, in my everyday life. And, um, you know, each day is a new exciting day, you know, to, to face with real estate and with, with people. I think that it's so true. Anyone that is at the top of their game, has to be passionate about what they're doing. Where does your passion come from? You know, I, I get such joy and thrills out of helping people when the property sells and when a buyer purchases, like just like their excitement is, it makes it all worthwhile. And, and it just drives me to like really help people like, you know, I wanna sell my home and I need that top dollar price or I wanna purchase my, my first home and you know, the excitement and then like their faces shining. And I know it sounds a little cliche, but it really is true and that's what drives me. So you have you know, so many listings that are top notch, it's probably in La Jolla as well, but we're standing in front of one in particular. Tell us about this property. So this property is in Upper Hermosa in La Jolla. It's a four bedroom, three bathroom. It's a little over 2,500 square feet. It's on a flat lot that's almost 9,000 square foot lot, which is almost a quarter acre, very hard to find in La Jolla. Um, it has beautiful features like hardwood floors, the kitchen's recently remodeled, quartz countertops, Carrera marble backsplash, a very nice master suite um, that opens up into a patio. Um, just really a beautiful property. It also has solar panels, so your electricity bill is practically nothing. Um, and just on a cul-de-sac street, very quiet here, quarter mile from the beach, parks, walking distance to authentic and um, wonderful restaurants and coffee shops. So just really a great property listed at 1.695 million. And I'm sure this and so many others are featured on your website. It is, and it has its own website as well too for this property, so you could check it out there too. Which I have to say, I went on your website and you have so many cool features. You know, you can plug in the dream house that you're looking for, what you're looking for, and then you get an email back, I love that. Yeah, well thank you. It's very interactive. It was such an honor to meet you for the first time here today, Melissa. Thank you so much for yeah, being with thanks us. Thanks for having me. We just heard from Alyssa Tucci about what's going on here in La Jolla and the San Diego Marketplace. We also got to see one of her fabulous listing videos. We hope you learned something today about La Jolla. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, now joining me in studio, this guy is the trifecta from finance to legal to real estate. Recently, he spoke on stage in front of over 2,000 of the real estate industry. He hosts his own radio show here to talk about the Heckam for Purchase, a niche product for the market. Michael Gaddis, good to have you on the show, man. Yeah, thank you for having me. Important topic. It is an important right? I topic. I mean, this is zeroing right in on something that is, uh, you know, we talk about the market and finance, but I mean, this is a very niche, unique product that exists for people. Explain it. Well, you know, reverse mortgages are becoming more and more popular because more and more people, because the baby boomers are turning 62 or older. In 10, fact, 10,000 a day. That's right, 10,000 yeah. a day. But reverse mortgages have that negative connotation to it. You know, I was at an event re recently and somebody came up to my little booth and they said, oh, I don't like reverse mortgages. And I said, really? And they said, yeah. They go, I'm looking into the home equity conversion mortgage, not the reverse mortgage. <laughs> I sort of like, it's yeah. the same thing. But, but that, isn't it the worst name? It's I the mean, worst name. Who wants name. to go and reverse in anything in life, right? You want to move forward, and that's what it can really do. I look at it as an opportunity, right? If you have equity, you can buy a second home, take cash out, no mortgage payment. But if you need a solution, have equity in your home, but no money to make the mortgage payment, it can be a solution. So it covers the whole spectrum. It's one of the most flexible loan products on the market today, and it literally can change a person's life. It can literally do it. I've seen it you know, completely just change the direction of a person's life. Give me an example of, of some people that you've been able to help with this financial Well, instrument. let me give you an example. There's a lady who lives in Oceanside. She made $1,800 a month between Social Security and a, and a small pension. Her mortgage payment was $1,100 a month. That did not include her property taxes, her insurance, her car payment, her utilities, her credit card bills, gas, anything. 
So she was basically subsidizing $900 a month out of her pocket, every, out of her savings every single month. When she came to see me, she was down to only $2,500, which is basically less than three months worth before she hit zero. Mm -hmm. And we were able to get her uh, into a reverse mortgage, which eliminated that $1,100 a month payment which allowed her to not have to subsidize anymore and allowed her to be able to stay in her house because she wasn't going to be able to do it. Well, what's interesting is we have a retirement crisis in this country, but so many people have equity in their home. They're just cash poor, so to speak. So equity rich, cash poor, you've That's heard right. that expression. This allows you to leverage the equity in your home. It was designed under Reagan. It's a government insured loan. You can live in your house till you're 200 years old. Are, are there any misconceptions? Is it right for everyone? Anything that anybody needs to know? Well, I think ba basically what everyone needs to know is, one, it's geared towards 60, people 62 years or older. They have to either own their house outright or they have to have a considerable amount of equity. One of the biggest myths about reverse mortgages is that you lose title to your home, which no. is absolutely not true. Title no. remains in your name or however you want to have it vested. It's a refi. That's it's right. A strategic it's a strategic refinance. It's a loan. That's what yeah. it is. But there, you know, with, as with everything, there's a lot of benefits to reverse mortgages. You know, allowing you to stay in your home. One of my favorite benefits of the reverse mortgage is if you have a, establishing a line of credit that grows. Literally, versus a HELOC, you can establish a HELOC that can be frozen. It can be reduced. But with a, a line of credit through a reverse mortgage, it cannot be frozen, it cannot be reduced, and in fact, it grows by the amount of whatever interest rate is set in your note. So it's an incredible thing. I've heard of have. people doing that as soon as they turn 62, even if they don't need it, because it can grow. And Absolutely, and, and if you need assisted living in the future, having the availability of mm. that amount to keep growing and growing and growing until you do tap into it. Now, for just just to be fair, it's only on the unused portion. So if you use a portion of it, you don't get the growth on the un, on the used portion. Only on the unused portion of the line of credit. I'm seeing it used on purchases as well. It is. It's a great tool for purchases. People are able to leverage into their forever house, not have to worry about making a payment. And, they're, and that's one of the things about living in California. So many people around here go, it's so expensive. I just can't afford to live here, especially you know, in retirement, which is yep. where everybody wants to be. So by using that reverse mortgage purchase, the aspect of it, you can put yourself into your forever house on a golf course or wherever you want to be in a retirement village and not have to worry about making payments. I, I want people to really think about it this way. Let's say you were buying a house and you had $500,000 cash, mm -hmm. right? Which, sure, it's a lot of money, but you're going to buy a house cash. Why do you buy a house cash? Because you want no mortgage payment. So you buy the house cash, now you own the home free and clear, no mortgage payment. You could buy a million-dollar house and still have no mortgage payment. You have the, the mortgage, but that accumulates, you're still, now you have a million dollar asset going up, no mortgage payment, and what would you rather live in a million dollar home oh, absolutely. or a $500,000 home? Absolutely. The quality of life is great. Now, there are some considerations you need to make sure that when you take into consideration, you always have to weigh the, the benefits versus the considerations in a reverse. And one of the things about a reverse you have to make sure is you have to be, you're still responsible for your property taxes and insurance. Yep. And it is a loan. It's not, there's a lot of advertisement out there right now that's kind of insinuating it's a it's a it's a benefit of the government it's not a benefit it's a it's a it's a federally insured loan insured. is what it is well you do workshops on this stuff this is great information for us here today on a show called the american dream where we talked a lot about real estate learn it know it visit michael gaddis online certainly go to his workshop we are out of time gaddis strong finish today all right that's all for today tomorrow at 10 30 a.m channel 4 for more of the american dream and of course if you want to engage in the conversation visit me online at craigsewing.com see you tomorrow